Will you please join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed as you can find it in your bulletins? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
seated. Would you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude and awe, acknowledging your greatness and majesty. You are the creator of all things, and we praise you for the beauty of your creation, the wonders of love, and the boundless love you shower upon us. In humility, we confess our shortcomings and ask for your mercy. Forgive us for the times we have fallen short, for the moments when we have strayed from your path. Grant us the strength to turn away from our sins and embrace the light of your guidance. We present our needs and desires before you, knowing that you care for us. Please guide us in our daily lives, grant us wisdom to make right choices, and provide for our physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. We lift up to you our concerns and trust in your perfect plan for our lives. We surrender ourselves to your will, O God. Help us to yield to your guidance, to be open to your leading, and to trust in your timing. May your peace reign in our hearts, and may we walk in step with your purpose for our lives. And now, let us lift up our prayers to you in one voice as we speak the ancient words your Son taught us and pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It wasn't. All right, good morning. Good morning. Let me share with you some announcements from the life of the church. Um, First, it is Communion Sunday, and this is less for the people in the room, more for anybody who might be watching online. Uh, We will have Communion Sunday together at at the end of the service, and we'd love for people online to join us. The problem is it's hard for me to get elements to you, so at some point, take a moment to pause, uh, pause what you're watching, or just run to your kitchen and get some elements so you can join us in Communion. Any kind of bread, cracker, juice will do. Uh, I want to take a moment and thank those of you who are volunteering last week on Easter Sunday. Absolutely beautiful services. In fact, thank you for all those who helped all through Holy Week. It was an incredible time for us to be thankful for the risen God and the ways that he has been present to us. Uh, You did a great job making this a a, a place that is is welcoming and comfortable for those of us who call this their spiritual home, but also for the many visitors who came during the season. So thank you for those of you who volunteered. I want to let you know there is a congregational meeting happening next Sunday in between the worship services. So it's a little confusing, but if you come to this worship service on the normal, your normal time period and you're a member of the church and you want to come to the congregational uh, meeting, then come a little bit early. We meet in Buswell Hall, right the fellowship hall right across the patio. 
So we will be talking mainly about um, electing new elders and deacons, and there'll be some conversation about my upcoming sabbatical. So again, that is next Sunday, probably starts at around 1040 in Fellowship Hall. There is a, um, two, uh, I don't have slides for this, I'm sorry for anybody who's online, uh, men's breakfast is happening this Tuesday. So 7.30, if you are interested in coming and eating a good breakfast with a bunch of guys from the church, great time just to come and be in fellowship, break bread together. We do have, then have a, a Bible study afterwards. The Bible study starts at 8, so if you aren't interested in bacon but only the Bible, then my heart for you. That's fantastic. But uh, come at 8 o'clock. But it goes to about 9 o'clock. Great time to connect together. I also want to let you know that um, kind of a, a, a young adult ministry sponsored small group thing is happening. We're going to start creating small groups. Um, and they're meeting today on the third floor at 1230. So if you're interested in small groups, young adults is a very um, a broad term in this church. We, uh, we're not so worried about too much about, is that that's true? Some of the young adults are here behind me. Um, rattling at me. So, so if you're interested in small groups, third floor, right after this worship service, um, in the youth room. And if you don't know where that is, just grab me on the patio, and I will show you where that is. Finally, uh, this ministry is made possible, frankly, be through donations from people like you. So I want to say thank you for those of you who have been giving, and I ask you to continue to give as you engage your faith with your finances and continue to partner with us in ministry here at Beverly Hills Presbyterian Church. With that, I'd like to invite our ushers forward for this morning's tithes and offerings.
you for the gifts that you've provided through the work of our hands. Multiply these gifts. Allow it become a, a sweet-smelling aroma to you so that it may go forth from this particular location to serve others throughout the county, the state, and the world. All this we claim in your son's precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, please pray with me. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come and to sing songs and to pray prayers. Opportunity to see our friends and to introduce ourselves to people who we have uh, not known before. Allow us now to focus more closely upon your word and to let your spirit permeate from one heart to the next. All this we claim in your son's precious name. Amen. You know, I always like to start a, a sermon off with something a little light. So here we go. A little man was in a restaurant, sitting at the table, getting ready to eat his, his meal. And uh, this larger man came in and whack, knocked him out the chair. He looked over at the little man, he said, that was a karate chop from Korea. The little man thought, ouch, that kind of hurt. Got back up, sat in the chair. A few moments later, the big guy comes back in and says, whack again. The little guy is on the floor. That was a judo chop from Japan. Well, of course, the little guy had enough of that. He got up, he kind of put one finger up, walked out the door. About 15 minutes later, he came back, smack! Knocked the big guy out cold. Turned around to the rest of the people and said, when he comes to, Tell him that was a Louisville slugger from Walmart. I want to talk today a little bit on the topic of unstoppable, Jesus, the light of the world. I got inspiration for this topic from working with a brother who's unstoppable, a brother who day and night prays for you, a brother who day and night wants you to know the love of Jesus Christ. Do you know who that is? Tell me, who is that person? Whoever said, Pastor Andrew, go to McDonald's and have a $20 Big Mac on me. <laughs> amen, amen. So in this passage, I'm going to be reading from the book of John. You can find it in the Pure Bibles on page uh, 238. It's in the back portion, the New Testament portion. So if you go to the back, you see that it starts to renumber again. Page 238 in the Pew Bible. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we sent it direct test and we were sent it and we seen it and testified to it and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was re revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But we walk in the light as he himself is the light. We have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus' son, of Jesus, his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Chapter 2 says this, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But 
If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The writer of this passage was trying to address some issues that came up in the local church. There were some people teaching a doctrine that was not quite theological, that was not quite following the Christocentric dogma of the Johannine community. There was a group of people that separated and said uh, that Jesus had dual citizenship, right? He was human, and then at the baptism of John, the Christ spirit came down and landed on him. But at the crucifixion, just prior, the Christ spirit left, and only the human body was on the cross. So right then and there, the writer in this, this passage was saying, well, that's not what we're teaching as part of the Yohanin community. That's not how we understand Jesus' work, his walk, his ability to interact with people. So he basically gives them three things in this passage. First, we're going to share with you what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have studied. We're going to share with you the traditions of the church. Second, we're going to let you know that all persons can fall short, that all persons can sing sin, but if you walk in the light and if you share the light, then you can be a transformational agent. And finally, when you do fall short, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to stay up late at night because we have an advocate with the Father. So the elder says this, we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we've looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. In like manner, we here at Beverly Hills Presbyterian Church have provided numerous opportunities for us to hear, feel, see, and touch. We started with Ash Wednesday service. In Ash Wednesday service, we were able to bring on our notes up to the altar those things that we wanted to uh, relieve ourselves of over that 40-day walk of the Lenten season. On Ash Wednesday, we brought it up. Uh, we put it into the jug. And Minister Calvin did his, uh, his uh, superhero thing when he lit it on fire. And we moved to the next segment. And the next segment was Palm Sunday. And we all celebrated as Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on an un, un, uh, untamed colt. You know, he came and they put their tonics down on the walkway. And the women, the children, and the men, they all waved their palms singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, glory to the king. But he wasn't coming in on a large stallion. He was coming in on a, on a foal, on a little donkey. And then we celebrated, or we experienced together Good Friday. We came back here, and as a service, we listened to the various scriptures. And as the service continued, we saw the lights dimming. And then we got to the point in the service where once again we brought on our notes those things we wanted to put on the cross of Christ, those things we wanted to leave at Calvary, put it in the jug, and the jug was broke, and the brokenness represented the brokenness of Jesus upon that cross. And we continued to journey. We continued to walk to Resurrection Sunday morning, to Easter Sunday morning. We saw the uplift of Jesus. We saw with uh, Mary and, and Martha and the other Mary that the stone had been rolled away and that Jesus was no longer in the tomb, but that he had defeated those powers that would keep him down, he had proven to be unstoppable. Then, of course, the icing on top of all of that were the sermons, the Bible studies, the lessons, and the servant walk that we were able to participate in with Pastor Andrew. The sermon cities, not all who wander are lost in alone for the ride, provided for us an opportunity to reflect during that Lenten season. And the liturgical calendar will tell us, and I know you may not want to hear this, but that the Easter season has seven Sundays 
So Pastor Andrew, for the next seven Sundays, this place has to be packed out. Every pew has to be filled because we're still celebrating Easter. Yeah, there you go, see? Easter. And that's liturgical. That means the color for liturgical Sunday is what? Hey, hey. Oh, there you go. I know who said that. I know who said that. There you go. The second message is this, that this is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, as the elder says, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. So the elder uses the illustration of light and darkness not because he, he understands that the eclipse is going to be coming across the central part of the Americas or not because he says, well, the, in society the melanoma of some is darker than the melanoma in other people, light and dark. He says, no, the, the, there is a, a concept here. When you're walking in the light, you're going to be able to do things that's transformational for others. So if you want to look in Matthew, page 29 in your pew Bible, Matthew 25, we find these words. Jesus is telling a parable to his disciples. He's talking about who is going to be able to move to the next level, what it takes to really reflect the light that's within yourself. He says this, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous would answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. So Jesus is saying, look, you got to let your light shine in such a way that you can transform the lives of others. you got to let your light shine in such a way that people know that you also have been blessed. He goes on to say the same thing in, in Matthew chapter 5, which is on page 4 of the New Testament division. Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, he says this, verse 14, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. Once you've been blessed by God, you can't hide that. Once your life has been transformed, you can't pretend it hasn't. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory not to you, not to your grandmother, not to your father, but to give glory to your Father in heaven. City on a hill. You put the city on the hill because it's a good defense. You put the city on the hill because it's, you're able to see things. You put the city on the hill because those weary travelers will know where to go for rest. You put that light on the light stand so that everybody in the household can see what's happening and where they're going. Elder continues, he says that Christ intercedes for us with God the Father. He puts it this way, but if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. We have an advocate, a spiritual advocate. A Holy Ghost advocate, because there are many types of advocates. You know, you can't turn on the TV without seeing someone who wants to be your advocate. The Kobe and Myers want to be your advocate. The Law Brothers want to be your advocate. Jacob Armani with his Laker logos wants to be your advocate. The Law Team, the British Lawrence or the Barnes firm wants to be your advocate. The Law Officers of Larry H. Parker, he wants to be your advocate. You know, Morgan and Morgan wants to be your advocate. And even good old Sweet James with his Armani suits on the parquet floor, slam dunking, says, I want to be your advocate. But no, the writer here says, you're going to have an advocate that's above and beyond that. Because Paul reminds us that sometimes the only connection we can have with God is through our thrones. So you need somebody who can help interpret those thrones. Because when the pain is so deep, words cannot express it. But Jesus, 
can interpret those groans. Jesus can interpret that sadness. Jesus can interpret those disappointments in a way that God the Father will understand. Therefore, Jesus becomes our advocate in life. The Roman Catholic nun, Sister Helen Prejean, was an advocate as well. And we know the story, a uh, dead man walking. And if you read the book, like I know we had to read the book in our Christian ethic class, or if you saw the movie, uh, Susan Sarandon and somebody by the name of uh, Sean Penn, who knows, who knows. But in, in both the book and the movie, we understand that the acts of violence the men did were a shock to the mind. But the ability to confess that sin and to acknowledge the sin and the knowledge that Jesus Christ will forgive us even in the muck, in the mire of the sin that we've done is an opportunity that cannot be overstated. So Sister Helen Prejean made it her life mission and still does the work today to go into those prisons, to go into death row, to find those who are afflicted by their transgression and to help them see the light of God before the state conducts their business. That might even be a good sermon, Pastor. Dead man walking. Huh? Make another one happen. Okay. So the writer continues. He says, Christ helps us to be and to understand. He's able to be our advocate because he is the righteous one. He knows how to respond. He knows how to defend. He knows how to create the proper pleading on our behalf when the law, uh, 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 the law elder the one who studied the law, the Mosaic law, came to him and said, Preacher, we know you do great things. We know that you're able to heal. We know that you understand uh, God. But truly, out of all of these commandments, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus responded. He said, look, it's this way. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as what, church? Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang what? All the law and the prophets. Isn't that a great advocate? Someone who can break down all the immense laws, all the immense codes, codices, all the immense practices, and just say, just love God and just Treat your neighbor as you would to have your neighbor treat you. He is our advocate. So that's why we're here today, church. We're here because God's work of redemption cannot be stopped on the cross of Calvary, on the hill of Golgotha. You know, there, there's a, a movie called Unstoppable, and, uh, and has Denzel Washington and Chris Payne in it. And in the movie, there's this freight train that uh, is under its own power that doesn't have an engineer, that doesn't have a conductor, but it's just going and it's moving and it's creating havoc and it's destroying lives and it's on its way to stand Pennsylvania and there's an elevated curve and, and if it falls off the track, it's going to be the greatest chemical disaster ever. So that's like the main plot, but there's a subplot. What is the subplot? The subplot is that there's this human factor that these two individuals are willing to give up their lives. This, these two individuals are willing to do whatever it takes to stop that train. Isn't that what Christianity is about? That Jesus Christ is willing to do whatever it takes to stop that train, that train of sin, that train of loneliness, that train of disgust, that train of just selfishness. Isn't that what life is about? That's why Jesus says here that I am the light of the world because when the, crap, when the cross came to stop me, it couldn't stop the presence of the King of Kings. When the, when the cross came to stop me, it couldn't stop the Lord of Lords. When the cross came to stop me, it couldn't stop the Alpha or the Omega. It couldn't stop the beginning or the end. It could not stop the revelation and the Genesis. Jesus Christ, he's the light of the world. He is the king of kings. That's why the songwriter, John Wesley, he says this. He says, we'll walk in the light, that beautiful light, come where the dew drops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night because Jesus is the light of the world. We'll walk in the light, that beautiful light, come where the dew drops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus is the light of the world. 
Can we sing that together? It's in your bulletin. The text is in your bulletin. Heart to hell, they just sing, Jesus is the light of the world. Let's sing that together. Huh. For those joining us at home, now might be a good time to grab some elements, a piece of bread, a little bit of juice so that you may join with us as we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Each month we pause to gather at this table, at the table a symbol of our everyday common need and common provision. We recognize that it is Jesus who provides. It is Christ who has made grace without borders. It is God who has made love our surety. It is the Holy Spirit that calls us continually, as we are, to sit with one another in the presence of the living God, the three in one. So we invite you now to come to this table. Come in the awe demanded by God's presence. Come into the authenticity, authenticity allowed in God's kindness. Come in confidence for ever one or you're in your life, in your death, and in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'd like to ask the ushers to come forward at this time to distribute the communion elements. Once you receive your elements, hold on to them and we will partake together. What wonderful music by the Beverly Hills Master Chorale. Let's give the Lord a hand praise as they prepare to bring us another selection.
betrayed, took bread. After blessing it, he broke it. Gave it to the people like us, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Let's go ahead and take out the bread and hold it in our hand as we pray together. Jesus, we know that we do not live by bread alone, but by the fullness of your presence, your revelation, and your word. This is true no matter our faults, no matter our brokenness, no matter our regrets. In fact, it is true with these things honestly acknowledged and honestly given to you to carry for us. So we confess and place our needs upon your shoulders. We place our brokenness upon this bread that you might bear our sins for us. When you are ready, church, partake of the bread. Now in the same manner after supper, Christ took the cup. They said, this cup is a new covenant poured out my blood for the forgiveness of sins. If you would take the other side of your, of your elements and open up the, the cup and let's pray together and then we'll partake of the wine together. Lord Jesus, in this cup we receive what you have done for us. We ask that you'd fill us with your life, fill us with your grace, fill us with your love, fill us with your presence so that we know that we are never alone. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God, and you are the people of God. Let us now receive our benediction. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wisdom of the writer of John to help explain that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which we have felt, and that which we have touched. We're thankful that when we sin, sin, we do have an advocate, one who's not a worldly advocate, but who can understand our groans. And most importantly, we're thankful, Heavenly Father, of the unstoppable ability of Jesus Christ to share his light with all of us through the ages. Let us now go forward after being renewed through the cup and the bread as agents of this light, carrying the love of Christ with us each and everywhere we go. And everybody under the sound of my voice said amen. 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 One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Blessed Holy Spirit.